So moving on, I want to talk about something a little bit more serious now. We have this story, if you guys haven't heard about this. This is the ruling in Texas, which has said that uh, they've banned an abortion drug, mifepristone. Mifepristone. I will learn how to pronounce that. So we actually covered this in a stream about three weeks ago um, when we were talking about this might happen. And unfortunately, as we sort of predicted during that stream, it came to be that uh, this conservative uh, judge in Texas has um, outlawed this drug, which is part of uh, Mephestone, Mephestone, which is part of the two-drug cocktail that is used for roughly 45% of all of the chemically induced abortions of the country, right? So that's bad news, but it's not the end of the story. So this was a lawsuit in Amarillo, Texas, right? That's the, what we reported on earlier. And uh, as I mentioned before, that town was chosen on purpose because it's in the middle of nowhere. Like, apparently it's a four-hour drive away from the nearest city, right? And they chose that town on purpose, so that way a lot of, uh, you know, the, and th the whole idea was that they were trying to sneak this under the radar to have this this um, trial, you know, and uh, this lawsuit so that without a lot of protests or without a lot of people knowing about it, so that just one day people would wake up and suddenly find out that they couldn't get abortions anymore. That was the plan. And unfortunately th for them, it failed because, you know, um, people are tenacious and they found out about it and protesters were making the journey and all that shit. Unfortunately, that didn't stop the ruling. Right. So here's the story, right? Uh, Mephepristone was, um, allowed, was approved for use by the FDA in 2000, right? So it's been being used for 23 years now, right? It's part of a three-drug combo, or two-drug combo, right? And what it was is that um, basically this lawsuit said that um, there wasn't enough testing, right? by the FDA, like the FDA didn't do sufficient testing, which is funny, you know, sufficient testing on a drug that's been in use for 23 years, you, you'd think by now, if that there were, if there were any like major complications or side effects, you think that there would be plenty of scientific data that they could rely upon and say that it's unsafe, right? They didn't go that route, you know, because these are Christians, Christians don't give a shit about science, right? So anyway, um, so yeah, basically that was what was going to happen, was that um, it was going to be banned everywhere in the country, which would immediately reduce many, um, you know, millions and millions of women in the country would no longer be able to get abortions if that were to happen. Then, less than an hour later, right, a three-judge panel in the Fifth uh, Circuit Court made another ruling that kind of didn't kind of struck down a, some of the um struck down some of that ruling but upheld other parts of it right and the part it struck down would said okay well it has to remain available right but that they were going to put it back to where it was in 2000 so what exactly did this fifth circuit uh, court of appeals what exactly did they rule on right so they said that the drug will have to stay on the market while we wait for the Supreme Court to take it up, right? Um, but they also upheld other parts of this ruling, right? Saying that, okay, um, the limit uh, before it was like if you were pregnant up to 10 weeks, you could take this drug. Now they're, they're reducing that down to seven weeks. That was the first thing, right? Then... Uh, they upheld a ruling prohibiting the um, distribution of this drug through the mail, right? So basically, uh, clinics and stuff can't get their hands on it anymore because they can't send it to them through the mail, which is a major problem. It'll have to be trucked in and stuff like that instead of instead of mailed, which is bullshit. Um, then also, if you use it, now you have to... Um, it, it requires three visits to the clinic, whereas before they would just give it to you all in one dose or something. Now you have to go in, take the first drug, 
leave, come back, take the second drug, leave, come back, and then have a doctor monitor you for side effects. That's what it was like in 2000 when it was uh, approved. And, you know, it was the... Um, these restrictions were relaxed a little bit, and now they're going back to that, right? Which just makes it more complicated, right? And then also all of the abortion clinics that use it have to have a doctor on staff in order to watch out for side effects, right? So here's the thing about that, of course, right? Yes, it, it allows it to be used still. That means women still have access to it, but it just makes that access harder and more difficult, right? That's the point. Now, instead of going with one visit, for example, now you have to go for three visits. So you have to take more time off of work. So more women won't be able to do it and stuff like that. And that's the entire point, you know. And now instead of uh, 10 weeks, it's seven weeks. So seven weeks is barely enough time for, you know, most of sometimes women don't even know that they're pregnant after seven weeks. Like this is why you, you see um, all of these different states in the South enacting a six-week abortion ban, right? Um Florida just signed a, you know, fucking Ron DeSantis in Florida just signed a six-week abortion ban, right? Why do they choose six weeks? It's because that's really only a month and a half, right? So a lot of the time, women don't even know that they're pregnant. And it's like right when they find out they're pregnant, oh, it's too late to get an abortion, right? It happens, you know, all the time. Like, uh, you know, a woman will naturally sometimes skip a month when it comes to, uh, you know, comes to um, menstruation right and that's a natural thing and it's so that's the reason why they choose you know instead of instead of eight weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks or whatever right that's why they choose six weeks because it makes it look like oh you can still get one <laughs> right you can still get one if you want but in real life it's like no it's it's essentially a de facto ban for the vast majority of cases right i mean that's really kind of disturbing in florida because if you look at uh you know, Florida now, ever since they overturned Roe v. Wade, right, a lot of women in the South would go to Florida to get abortions, right? It, it's increased by something like 6,000 abortions in the last year and a half. I mean, it's only been, it's only been like, what, half a year since Roe v. Wade was overturned? So that's how, you know, and just think about, like, well, those are the women that can afford it, that can actually make the trip out of the, out of the state. <laughs> right so how many women are getting back alley abortions we don't know about right how many women are are um you know just res just giving birth and then abandoning the child leaving it in a dumpster something like something like that how many women are putting their lives in danger by being forced to get abortions in this in these southern states right remember folks this problem didn't exist a year ago right all of these issues, that these issues, this was not a problem a year ago. In every state in the South, you were, you know, it was legal for people to get abortions now. And now we've just manufactured this fucking crisis. Let's never forget that shit. Like, the, the Republicans caused this, right? Every woman who dies because of that is blood on their hands, right? This is what we should be, uh, this is the, this is how we should be, like, you know, framing this message, right? It's about fucking women dying. <laughs> so anyway, another ruling in Washington on Thursday said that access to the drug must not be affected in 17 states, right, while we wait for the um, Supreme Court to take this up, right? So this was uh, an actually uh, an Obama-appointed judge that made this... Uh, this um, ruling on thursday you know the the texas uh ruling was made by a trump appointed judge which once again sh you know illustrates why it's important who's in charge and how you know the president can uh, have influence even after he's out of office right so yeah um and what that was all about is that 17 states and the um district of columbia sued to protect access to this drug in those jurisdictions and so this this um judge in in washington ruled in their favor saying you know that uh they have to so while we're waiting for all of this stuff to shake out at the very least in those states the states that actually care about their people i couldn't find a list of them but at least it'll be um accessible there 
couldn't find a list of the the actual states, but um, you know, you can kind of just use common sense and judgment and figure out which ones are on it. <laughs> you know, the red states are the ones that are limiting access to this drug, and the blue states aren't. You know, which shows that once again we live in two Americas. Anyway, so that's kind of fucked up. Um, and it looks like right before this. The Supreme Court did something that I didn't expect. And they have suspended all of these rulings until Wednesday, April 19th. I was not uh, expecting that. So it looks like the 19th is when they're going to pick this up. And we'll see what happens on the 19th. So if I were a betting man, I would bet that the Supreme Court upholds the Texas ruling and Mephepristone gets banned. And the reason why I would bet that is because this is the same court which overturned Roe v. Wade in the first place. It's a court which is filled with activist conservative judges like Amy Comey Barrett. Right. So, what? who brought this lawsuit in the first place, right? This, this whole lawsuit that started all this shit was brought by a group called... The Alliance Defending Freedom, right? And these guys are a, a group of, of conservative um, lawyers. You know, it's, it's a conservative, basically, special interest group is what they are. And um, they're one of the richest and uh, largest Christian legal interest groups in the country. Um, they even have overseas branches based out of Austria. So... Uh, this is the big time, these, these, these people, right? And, um, they brought in, for example, in 2021, they have a, um, a $13 million endowment to maintain them in, you know, forever. And then also they bring in donations. In 2021, they brought in around, uh, I got it written down here, $78 million in donations. So... When you talk about special interest groups, folks, this is one of the biggest special interest groups, like, out there. Pretty, you know, influential stuff. They have connections to a lot of our conservative politicians, in particular Amy Comey Barrett, you know. Also, uh, Mike Pence, William Barr, right, so it's like, these guys are, I mean, when it comes to uh, influence peddlers, like these these guys are up there with the, uh, at the top of the heap, right? Um, among their top policy objectives is, of course, outlawing abortion, along with um, allowing Christian business owners to discriminate when it comes to service to gay or trans people. So if you guys remember the whole thing with the uh, the conservative uh, Christian bakery owner who didn't want to bake a cake for a trans couple, right? Or was it a cake for a gay wedding, if you remember that? Remember that whole thing? These guys have jumped on, to, on board with that and are now advocating for the rights of Christians to discriminate, which is really disturbing. You know, because if you think about it, the, the law says, right, that we're not allowed to discriminate against anybody. If you serve the public, you're not allowed to discri discriminate, right? If you do not serve the public, you are. So if you have, for example, a private school that doesn't serve the public, you're allowed to discriminate. You're allowed to say, for example, have a religious private school where you teach one religion. That's a form of discrimination, of legally permissible discrimination, right? Another one is if you have a club like, say, the Ku Klux Klan, right? It's a private club. You get to decide who joins it. You don't serve the public in any capacity. This is why groups like the Ku Klux Klan are allowed to exist, because it's a private club, right? These guys want to make it so that if you serve the public then you're allowed to discriminate, right? Using the basis of their religion. So if you say, for example, taking the example of the uh, of the wedding cake baker, you know, the, the bakery owner doesn't want to serve a wedding cake, you know, create a wedding cake for a gay couple, right? Why? Because his religion says 
he's not allowed to, right? So basically, it's using the excuse of one's religion to not, you know, to discriminate in a public capacity, right? Kind of the same way, if you remember a little while back, there was a, there was a court case, I remember, about a Muslim person who worked in a grocery store who didn't want to sell pork to somebody, right? And that person lost. That person lost that case because the job description says, hey, you know, that's, that's actually discrimination right there. Like, it, it's not discriminating against you because you have, you know, as the person selling the pork, because your job description says you have to sell the pork to people that buy it because you serve the public. And if you don't want to work that job, you're free to quit, right? Kind of the same way if, like, you know, say you were a bartender, but it was against your religion to, to drink alcohol, then you can't serve as a bartender. And that was the that was the basis for that. And it's correct in my in my opinion. Now, if you had a private grocery store that only served a members-only clientele, right, and, you know, that kind of thing. And you could say, and if it was like, you know, we only serve Muslims here or whatever, and this is a Muslim thing, and then only Muslims are allowed to eat here, and it was a private thing that the general public couldn't join, right, then you might be able to get away with saying, well, then we won't serve, you know, then I won't serve you pork, right? But not if it's a public thing. Not if it's a public thing open to the public, where the public comes in. Because the, there, there has to be a reasonable expectation of equality when you serve the public, right? That's what these guys are against. They want to they change that so that, the, you know, somebody could claim they're on religious grounds. Somebody could claim that, no, I'm not going to serve this person because this person's an atheist. Or this person's a Muslim. Or this person's gay. Or this person's trans. I'm not going to serve them. I'm not going to help them, right? Then you go, okay, well, then if you think about it, then some people might go, well, fuck it, just go to another bakery, right? Who cares? Okay, that guy doesn't want to serve you, fine, he loses his money. All right, well, what happens if it's a bank, right? What happens if it's a bank and it's the only bank in your town and you want to get a loan to buy a house and the bank says, we're not going to serve you because you're an atheist. We're not going to serve you because you're gay. We're not going to serve you because you're trans. And our religion says so. Right? When does it stop? That's the problem with this. Right? That's that's why this can't be allowed. This is why you're not allowed to discriminate against people in the first place. When does it stop? Right? When does it become, you know, no. No. If you're a bank and you're serving the public, so, and it's the same, this is the excuse, I, the reason why I brought that up, because that's the excuse that they used in the, during the civil rights era, for banks to not give home loans to black people. That was the excuse, right? You know, like, oh, well, we're not gonna, you know, no, that's bullshit, right? So when does that become a thing, you know, like, when does it, when does the rights of the individual and the public, like, when does it, when does the public good outweigh your right you know, to uh, discriminate because of your religion, right? That's what the, that's what this group here, the Alliance Serving Freedom Foundation, that's what they're trying to change. They're trying to remove that. That's a fundamental part of our, of, uh, of the Constitution, right? Says that all of us will, uh, will be served equally, that all men are created equal, right? Doesn't it say that? It says that, doesn't it? And that we're all, you know, what is that? How does that, um, you know, I think that's the Declaration of Independence, right? All men are created equal. How does that serve itself out in, in our law, though? It's that everyone gets equal protection under the law. So in the Constitution, it actually has that, the, the equal protection clause, right? They want to remove the equal protection clause. They basically want to say that, you know, yeah, everybody's equal except we have special privileges because we're Christians, right? And other people will not get those special privileges, right? Because what we covered last time is that the lemon test has been overruled, right? We min we mentioned this last time when we were talking about the 10 commandments in uh in schools, right? The lemon test, 
the Supreme Court has overruled that. This same Supreme Court that has, uh, you know, this highly conservative Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade also overturned the Lemon Test, right? Lemon Test was the test that basically said that, um, you know, uh, basically it was the it was the provision that said um, if it's if it's in the public, like if if you're like the government can't favor one religion over the other, right? And instead of, of using that sort of test to see if it's in the public good, instead what they're going to do now is they're going to say, well, does it conform with um, American history and tradition? And that's going to be the test from now on. To So, so for example, if you want to have the Ten Commandments in your school, right, then the court is just going to rule and saying, well, there's history and tradition of the Ten Commandments in, in American schools, so that's good. But if, like, say, the Satanic Temple wants to have a statue of uh, Baphomet, then they can just turn around and be like, no, that is not in American, uh, you know, we have no history or tradition of Satanism in our school, so no, we're not going to allow it. So basically, because that was what the, the counter to that kind of thing was before, was that according to the Lemon Test, if you wanted to have, say, the Ten Commandments in the school or a statue of Moses, then any other religion they had to allow that as well so if like say uh the hindu people came and wanted to have a statue to a statue of ganesh or something or brahma or whatever or vishnu or something then they had to allow that also so if you're going to allow the christians to do something then other then the state would have to allow other religions to do the same and of course all the christians around there don't want that because they want their religion to be promoted not anybody else's religion and that was the uh that was the grounds that they always managed to keep these these sort of like public displays of religions in check, right? And the, the satanic, I'm bringing up the satanic temple because the satanic temple was like, they're experts at that shit. You know, like they would always find out whenever, because this kind of thing, you know, the, the thing with the public displays of religion, it's been happening for decades, right? And they've, they're really good with it. They're always, they always show up and counter sue and say, well, hey, if you're going to have a statue of Moses, then we have to put a statue of fucking like, Anton LaVey or something, <laughs> right? And then it would always, and they'd always back down. The Christians would always back down. Well, according to the Supreme Court now, they're not going to back down anymore because they're not obeying that lemon test that they previously had. And I guarantee you that shit's going to come up. It's going to come up and they're going to, the Supreme Court is going to say, yeah, okay, it's fine to have uh, prayer in schools now. It's fine to have the Ten Commandments in schools now. It's, it's fine to teach creationism in schools and uh, any other religion, no, <laughs> right? Because it doesn't fit the American American uh, history or or tradition, and it, it's such bullshit. It's the most transparent, Christo-fascist bullshit there is, right? Anyway, so that's what the Alliance Defense Fund, uh, the Alliance, uh, what the fuck were they called again? The um, I got it written down here. God damn it. You think I would remember it? I just said it two seconds ago. Alliance Defending Freedom Foundation, right? That's what they're all about. They are a little bit more involved in this fight against abortion in particular, though, because they wrote the model legislation which led to um, the case that overturned Roe v. Wade, which is Dobbs versus Jackson Women Health Organization in Mississippi, right? So when I say model legislation, like, what does that mean? Well, a lot of the legislation that gets passed by that you see in state, you know, in particular in state legislation is actually written by somebody else. And uh, in particular, special interest groups. Right. So you'll see, for example, legislation that is very favorable to like car insurance or something like that. And it's because it was written like literally written by the car insurance companies. Right. Or something. You know, you'll see that all the time. You see legislation in, in Nevada relating to gambling, which was written by gambling companies. That, that's a, that happens constantly all around the country, right? And it's one of the major, in my opinion, one of the huge problems that we have in this country. It should be outlawed, right? But unfortunately, it isn't. And that's what happened here. So they actually wrote the bill the anti-abortion bill, which was voted in the law in Mississippi, which became 
the basis that uh, that court case, the Dobbs case was, which went all the way to the Supreme Court and got Roe v. Wade overturned, right? So remember, this is stuff that these people have been working for for years. And this is why it's important, like, you know, it's important who you vote for. But we got to pay attention to stuff like this as well, right? These sort of extra governmental organizations, these special interest groups that are really go hand in hand, parcel in parcel with, with our political parties. This is where the political parties are getting their funding from, are from groups like this, right? So who exactly is the Alliance Defending Freedom? Right. Well, they started as a group called the Alliance Defense Fund way back in the day, back in the 80s. Right. Um, they kind of came out of the Christian right evangelical movement. Hang on a second, folks. Need to just adjust my headset. Back in the uh, back in the 1980s, they came out of, you know, basically TV preachers, essentially. <laughs> right. Is how they started. So um, they were co-founded by six um, evangelical, essentially preachers, right? Uh, a guy named Bill Bright, who founded a group called um, Campus Crusade for Christ, right? They go out and basically um, preach to college kids and fuck up their minds, essentially. I've heard of them before. They're, they're kind of, you know, they go on, basically they minister on college campuses and, and a bunch of assholes. Um, another guy named Pastor James Kennedy, who described same-sex marriage as counterfeit marriage. He was one of the founders. Um, another dude named Robert Marlin Maddox, who was a radio host, radio show host personality, right? Who died in 2004 and was really big on um, anti-Semitic and also anti uh um, Islamophobic, like basically Islamophobic and homophobic conspiracy theories. I wrote a couple of books where he claimed that, uh, you know, um, after 9-11 that, uh, that public schools were being infiltrated by like, you know, terrorists, Muslim terrorists and that kind of thing. And that seventh graders in this state or that state were being brainwashed into turning into terrorists, stuff like that. So that guy's gone. He died in 2004, you know, and uh, nobody, uh, you know, not much was lost. Big guy that I noticed, though, was James Dobson, right? So James Dobson, I do know. And uh, James Dobson is the founder of a group called Focus on the Family, which um, was basically a, a special interest group, right? And they would do things like uh, they had their own ministry. They had a radio show. You know, they're basically what you would call a like a corporate, like corporate ministry is what they are. Like these, these basically these these sort of like mega churches are run like corporations, essentially, right? And that's kind of what they are. Like the they're sort of like a mega church, but more like up until 2017, they they functioned more like a special interest group. And then in 2017, as soon as Trump took over, they became a ministry. And the reason why they did that is because they don't have to pay taxes. And under a, um, you know, very friendly regime like the Trump regime, they knew that no one's going to bother them about it. Nope, dog, go away. Sorry, dog is, uh, my dog is scratching at the door there. So, um, yeah, James Dobson has four years, um, basically spread anti-gay, anti-trans, uh, and Islamophobic messages. He used to have a, uh, um, he used to have a, a radio show, uh, like focus on the family for teenagers where like teenage kids would call in and he'd like fuck their minds up. <laughs> right. I actually used to troll on his forums back in the day. That was fun. Back at the turn of the century there. I would go on his, his teenage forums and, and, like, you know, make fun of people and stuff until they finally kicked me off. That was fun. Um, and anyway, they've been working for years against uh, abortion, to outlaw abortion, against gay marriage, uh, gay adoption. They've been trying to outlaw that. They have been trying to remove parental rights from gay people. So, for example, if you are, you know, a gay man or a, or a gay woman, 
and you come out of the closet. They've been trying to like, they've been advocating like saying that you lose all rights to children, <laughs> right? Stuff like that. Um, they're in in support of state sponsored prayer. You know, prayer in schools, prayer before like uh, state, you know, um, legislation meetings. You know, like before, like before um, the legislators meet or whatever, they want to have like prayer, that kind of thing. And also, advocates of teaching creationism in schools. And basically, what they did before is they would just go around and raise money. That was their main thing. They would get donations. I remember in, in 2008, for example, um, while we were uh, having the, the fight over gay marriage, they raised something like, I think I, I read an article once where they raised something like $90 million dollars in California, like just only in California to stop gay marriage, which thankfully they failed at. So it's like, this is, this is big money. That's the, that's the other thing about this. You know, we, we often talk about conservative grifters and stuff, you know, things, you know, like Marjorie Taylor Greene or something, or, or, you know, Alex Jones or whatever. And we talk about these grifters, you know, they sell fucking they sell, like, vitamin supplements and T-shirts and, and, like, DVDs and shit, right? Well, that's kind of small potatoes when it comes to, like, the, the real major grifters are churches, <laughs> right? They're churches that are, like, pulling in donations, and they're pulling in millions upon millions upon millions of dollars, right? So that's what, uh, yeah, James Dobson has been doing this shit for literal decades. So... Looks like he, uh, you know, got his fucking caught, you know, looks like he was the, the terrier that caught the car there, huh? I mean, you know, that's the thing about it is that it, they're, they're winning when it comes to, when it comes to abortion, they're winning because they've managed to stack the courts in their favor, right? So the judge in this case, whose name is, uh, Matthew K K Zamarik? This guy's last name C A K A C S M A R Y K. It's like, like what the fuck kind of last name is that? Anyway, I've got an article about from Vox on who this guy is. Right, I'll put this down in the chat for you guys. What time we got? Ten forty-eight. Okay, I got some time. Here's the uh, thing that we're gonna be looking at here. Let me just go ahead and turn on my other monitor and all that. Lewis Hedgehog. Yep, there should be a law saying all laws passed by Congress should be written by Congress. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You shouldn't allow... Now, here's the thing, right? I do believe that you should allow the input of interested groups. When they say special interest groups, right, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's like if you're writing, for example, legislation regulating the... Uh, airline industry then you should hear from airline professionals right and even i would even say yes the airline companies for example should get a say get should get some input on what those regulations are right you don't want people you know legislators they're just lawyers right you don't want people that know nothing about an industry regulating an industry you want to have input from the people that actually work in that industry right but here's the thing, you don't want them to create the legislation out of hand all by themselves because what ends up happening is that the owners of the companies craft legislation that benefits them the most at the expense of everybody else. So no, you want to listen to the you know, you want to listen to the the workers, the safety professionals, stuff like that, you know, the people that actually do the work and know where things go wrong, where things go right what we want to preserve and what we need to regulate, what's dangerous and what isn't, right? And which corners should not be cut, you know, because they're dangerous, shit like that. That's what you want to, that's who you want to, like, get input from. And you don't want to be taking stuff like this, where it's like, you know, the airline industry, like, just straight up writes all the laws when it comes to, like, you know, regulating the airline industry or t the tobacco industry, writing laws that regulates tobacco, stuff like that. It's like, that's what you don't want. And that's what ends up happening a lot of the times, you know, and these people are really not that different. It's like, why is a conservative Christian, like, special interest 
writing the law that has to do with access to abortion, right? Why are they why are they writing it? If they want to have input with it, they can write their congressman like anybody else, right? But that's what our system is. Our system is basically set up to benefit people with the money, and that's why these guys got access. That's why they were able to write you know, to, to write the model legislation for this because they have money. Because they have the money and, you know, Republicans are corrupt and they took the money. And I'm not saying that Democrats are any better. Well, I am. I am saying in, in this regard, at least, they're way better. <laughs> right? But, you know, that's what our system is, folks, right? So anyway, I want to read a little bit of this article here. This is, let's turn on our laptop again. This is a Vox article all about this guy, um, the judge in this case, the uh, the case in Armorio that overturned this, uh, you know, overturned uh, the FDA um, approval of a Mephestopistrom. Goddamn, I'll never learn how to pronounce that. How an obscure Christian right activist became one of the most powerful men in America. All right. Read a little bit more of this. On Thursday evening, a Trump-appointed judge named Matthew Kasamarik. You guys see that weird-ass name, right? Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea how to pronounce that shit. Kas Kasamarik. Effectively ordered the Biden administration to reinstate a harsh pro-Trump-era border policy known as Remain in Mexico which requires many immigrants seeking asylum in the United States to remain on the Mexican side of the border while their case is being processed. Second time, Kasarmik has pulled this stunt. He did the same thing in 2021, and the Supreme Court overturned his decision last June. Getting a little bit of background on this guy, so you can kind of see exactly who he is, right? It's a significant significant decision in his own right, will only prolong uncertainty at America's southern border, but Kasarmik's order in this case, Texas v. Biden, was merely the capstone of an unusually busy week for this judge. His busy week and months of earlier actions show the havoc one rogue federal judge can create, especially in today's ju judiciary. Previous Thursday, Kasarmik became the first federal judge since the Supreme Court uh, eliminated the constitutional right to an abortion to attack the right to contraception. Kasarmik's decision in Den Dindra v. Bracera targets Title X, a federal program that provides grants to health providers to fund family planning, planning and contraceptive care. He claimed that the program is unlawful because it doesn't require grant recipients to get parental permission before treating teenage patients. Lest there be any doubt, his opinion is riddled with obvious legal errors. Kasarmik didn't even have jurisdiction to hear the Denda case in the first place. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, okay. Moving on. Meanwhile, in mid-November, Kasarmik handed down another decision in Nessie v. Bracera, which held that a federal law prohibiting certain forms of discrimination by health providers does not protect against anti-LGBTQ discrimination. His opinion cannot be squared with the Supreme Court's decision in Bostock v. Clayton County, 2020, which established that statutes prohibiting sex discrimination also ban discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity because it's impossible to discriminate against a person for being homosexual or transgender without discriminating against that individual's based on sex. You guys see a pattern here so far? See this? Uh, the rulings that this guy seems to be um, going with here? Right. Very anti, uh, anti-abortion, anti-LGBTQ, anti-immigrant. Moving on. Meanwhile, abortion rights advocates are holding their breath, waiting for Kasarmik to decide Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine versus FDA, a case asking him to force the FDA to withdraw its approval of Mepeftrostone, a drug used to induce an enormous percentage of all abortions in the United States. We know how that one went, right, folks? <laughs> So, yep, this was written, this was written before the decision. Kasarmik is one of many Trump appointees to have the federal bench who appears to have been chosen largely due to his unusually conservative political views. Former lawyer at a law firm affiliated with the religious right, he's claimed that being transgender is a mental disorder and that gay people are disordered. As Senator, Senator Chuck Schumer said during his confirmation fight, 
Mr. Kasarmik has demonstrated a hostility to the LGBTQ bordering on paranoia. And Kasarmik is just as fixated on what straight people are doing in their bedrooms. In a 2015 article, Kasarmik d denounced a so-called sexual revolution that began in the 60s and 70s and which sought public affirmation of the lie that the human person is an autonomous blob of silly putty unconstrained by nature of biology and that marriage, sexuality, gender identity, and even the unborn child must yield to the erotic desires of liberated adults. That's one thing that we really can't forget when we talk about the religious right is their aversion to all things sexual, right? Anyway, you get the idea, you know, basically this guy Kasarmik is the worst of the worst, the, the biggest piece of shit that you can imagine. And it's really no surprise that the uh, Alliance for Freedom Foundation or whatever the fuck they're called went to this guy because they have him in his pocket. You know, they basically have this guy in their pocket, right? He's one of them, essentially. I'll leave the rest of this you to you guys to um to read for yourselves, right? But, um, you know, just wanted to kind of show, I wanted to bring that up and show it to you guys because it, it matters, you know. It matters who the, pre like, you know, when people talk about, like, well, voting, and why should I bother voting and all that? Because, you know, this is um, tomorrow, next year is an election year, right? And we're going to have to go through all of the bullshit voting, you know, election all over again. Probably it's most likely going to be Trump versus Biden again, <laughs> right? We're going to have to go through all that shit all over again. And people are going to, you know, people always get frustrated whenever there's an election. And they always say, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Right? All of this shit that's happening right now is a direct, you know result of Donald Trump being elected, right? These people have been working towards this for decades, right? But they've never been able to penetrate the courts in the way that they have, thanks to the Republicans basically stealing the election, <laughs> right? I still think 2016 was, was bullshit and that it, it shouldn't have gone to Trump. But, you know, I will die on that horse till the day, till the day I die, I'll, I'll believe that. But this is what happens. They manage to snake their way into the White House, right, and get hundreds and hundreds of judges basically steal the ju judiciary and also steal the Supreme Court. And now they're enacting their agenda. And this is what it looks like when the conservative agenda gets enacted, right? And it's because the person who got the less amount of votes in 2016 became president, you know? This, make no mistake, even though, you know, even though these groups have been working behind the scenes for decades, right, they wouldn't have been able to overturn Roe v. Wade if Amy Comey Barrett wasn't on that, wasn't on that Supreme Court, right? Wouldn't have happened, you know? Could you argue that would happen at some point in the future? Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe if we had a, another, you know, legitimately elected Republican president, yeah, it could have happened, or maybe not. We have no way of knowing, <laughs> right? But we can say what did happen. What did happen, right, was that Trump was able to put three choices on the Supreme Court, right, turn that court into a, a conservative supermajority, and they turned around, first thing they did, turned around outlawed abortion. Right. And now they're going to outlaw a bunch of other crap. Right. They're probably going to, you know, they're probably going to try to overturn gay marriage. Right. If we're really lucky, they may even also try to overturn, you know, um, interracial marriage. Right. And if we're super duper duper lucky, they may try to do things like um, make it legal for state sanctioned, uh, you know, state sanctioned fucking prayer prayer in schools, right, creationism in schools, all of that shit's open now. The, the doors are open to all of that stuff, all of these things that people f have been fighting against for decades and decades and decades, and it's been going our way. You know, we've been winning these fights, right, because the Constitution supports us. Not anymore, right? Now that the arbiters of the Constitution are on their side, they're going to twist it around to say whatever the fuck they want it to say. 
and they've already proven that that's what they'll do because that's what they did on Roe v. Wade. That's what they did on abortion. They ignored 50 years of precedent and used the thinnest and most weak of legal arguments to overturn that, right? And they'll do it again. They'll do it with discrimination. They'll do it with the, uh, with the you know, Civil Rights Act, right? They'll do it with everything. They'll, they'll turn this country into a theocratic Christian, you know, fucking hellhole, right? They'll make it so that uh, Christians get special privileges, <laughs> like we were talking about before. They're, they'll ena they'll enable that, and pretty soon you'll be it'll be legal for you to discriminate against people, but only if you're a Christian, right? And at that point, the civil rights are gone, right? When you can claim, you know, when you can break the law because you claim it's your religion, then forget it. Civil rights over with, <laughs> right? How long before people are getting thrown in jail for being an atheist, right? For being a, for being a Muslim, right? For being gay because somebody, because they violated, you know, a Christian civil rights. How long before that shit becomes law, right? How long before they're allowed to just run you out of town and there's nothing you can do about it? How long before they can just fire you from your job? And, you know, do you think corporations and shit won't take advantage of that? Of course they fucking will. We fired him. Why? Because it's against our religion. Because he's, you know, whatever. Right? How long before it's against their religion if you're black, if you're not, you know, if you're not white? Right? Or even like, oh, well, you're married. You have a, you have, you're in an interracial marriage. That's against our religion. You're fired. Or we're not going to serve you. How long before that happens, right? This is what opens the door to all this shit. So if you're looking, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, like, you know, it'll never go back. No. It, it can and it will, right? Societies regress all the time. I mean, we've seen it within the last hundred years, right? Iran, Afghanistan. <laughs> right. Somalia. These are places that were secular, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. These places were secular. They were actually nice places to live. And now they're overrun with religious zealots. Right. I mean, Uganda just passed a law saying that, you know, I, did they pass a law? They, they, there's a law there like where they'll execute gay people. Right. You, you don't think that can happen here? It can't. <laughs> it can when when religious fanatics take over people suffer that's why it matters folks hello folks if you like what i do and you want to support the channel please consider buying something from my sd shop supporting me on patreon liking and subscribing and checking me out across my social media links listed below thank you all so much and see you next time